Father, we thank you for today. We bless your name. We glorify your name. As we go forth today, we open this service in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, take control today. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, church. Um, today's hymn is Old Rugged Cross.
to the person next to you and say happy Easter. You know, today at Sunday school, we learned about giving God thanks. And I think it's very important that we thank God that he sent his son Jesus to die for us on the cross. Hallelujah. Of the name, the name, the name of, the name of 
ready to lift the name of Jesus today? It says he has given him a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. I want us to just praise the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. inside 
Throwing a man, throwing a man, throwing a man. Jesus is throwing a man, throwing a man all the time. Jesus is throwing a man, throwing a man.
appreciate the King of Kings. I appreciate the Lord of Lords this morning. Father, you are so good. Father, you are so good. Father, you are precious. Father, you are awesome. Father, you are worthy of all our praise, oh God. Thank you, Jesus.
God be praised forever and ever. Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That is why you and I are seated today. So we bless his name. So we'd like to welcome everybody to service today. Today is Easter, so you're welcome to church. This is the amazing grace assembly of the redeemed Christian Church of God, where the grace of God is. So we bless God for this church. And we'd like to welcome those that are worshiping with us online in our conventional way. Let's just welcome them with a wave of hand. Though they are not, okay, yeah, with a wave of hand. And for those that are worshiping with us in person, we'd like to appreciate you. Is anybody worshiping here for the first time? We'd like to welcome you in our own way, in the amazing grace way. So is anybody worshiping with us for the first time? Everybody, we are all family. Praise the Lord. So let's welcome ourselves. So, fire. May you really be blessed. May you really be blessed. As we fellowship here in the midst, in the name of the Lord, may you really be blessed. that we've not seen for a very long time. They are back in church, so we welcome you all to church. And so this is our weekly activities on Sundays. The first Sunday we have the Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving. then regular Sundays we start, or every Sunday we start with a workers meeting. It starts by 9.30 to 10 a.m. Then on, uh, followed by Sunday school from 10 a.m. to 10.30. Then service starts immediately after Sunday school. On Fridays, we have Bible study from 7 to 8 p.m. Then we have the daily prayer meeting from 7 to 7.30. It's only on Sunday that we come to church. Every other church activities, they are held on the Zoom platform. And on the last Friday, we have the vigil of the month, which starts from 10 a.m. and ends by 12 a 12 p 10 p.m. and ends by 12 a.m. The first three days of the month is our praying and fasting prayer, uh, program. So we come together by 7.30, 7 to 7.30 to break the fast and pray to God. Then we should not forget that the women of this church, they meet every third, every third Sunday of the month. The time is 7 to 8 p.m. So as a virtuous woman in the house, please plan to be in attendance. And also the men, they meet every first Sunday of the month at 7 p.m., also on the Zoom platform. We should be reminded that donations are done online via info at rccgaga.ca. And please be reminded to join or to visit a church WhatsApp, um, a church social media handle. We are on Facebook, MixLR, Twitter, and Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, we should... Be reminded that the church, this is, a, um, this is an announcement that has been waited of. So this time, let's remind ourselves that the church is always willing to assist those that are coming into the country for the first time. So if you know someone that is coming and does not know his or her whereabouts, the church will be willing to assist in the person in getting his foot in this place. The Lord will help us all. So please... For any assistance for those that are watching us through YouTube or the live program, we should uh, we should visit. Uh, we can email the church at info at rccgaga or visit the YouTube channel as we can see now. 
for more information. And we also have a website. There's a website, www. Okay, yeah, so that's, okay, so the website is also there. So please visit for more information. And we should be reminded of um, the evangelism team. They, they will be they evangelize every third Saturday. So as a member of this church, if you are, if you are led to be part of it, and you should be led to be part of the evangelism team, they meet every third Saturday of the month. So this month, the prayer team will be joining the evangelism team to go out to evangelize. The date is April 20th, that's 20, 2024. At the time is 11 o'clock. So everybody comes to church, they pray, and they launch out to go preach the word of God. And also, we be having a workers' retreat. It is starting on I mean, Friday, May 24, 2024. The venue is not known yet. So as a worker, please visit the church um, workers' WhatsApp group for more information. And if there's any other announcement, it will be given to us in due course. And I hope I'm not missing it. The Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Okay, so the children, please, we have a presentation from the children. Please invite the children, join us in welcoming them as they come to make their presentation. Good morning, church. My name is Eva Kuhn. I'm, I'm from the Children Church. We have a presentation. Thank you. Good morning. My, good morning. My name is Penny. Listen and be blessed. Thank you. eternal life. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. A is for Atonement. Romans 5, 8. You see, a just judge time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might dare to die. But God demonstrates in his own love for us. In the, while we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. S is for Savior. Matthew what Matthew 1 verse 21 for she for she shall bring for she shall bring her for she shall bring forth a son named Jesus 
for he shall save his people from, from their sin. T is for triumph. Galatians chapter 2, verse 15. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them publicly today, triumphing over them in it. E stands for anti tomb, Luke chapter 24, verse 5 to 6. And as they bowed down to him, why ye seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? R is for resurrection. John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. In the sunrise, at the waking of the day, when the songbirds celebrate new beginnings. And in the springtime, when the flowers fill the trees and the grass is growing green, I can see him. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everyone. Hallelujah. The choir would like to give a ministration, um, thanking God for his the sacrifice of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross.
Hallelujah. to give you an envelope. Hallelujah. So we give our offering via Interact, like I said earlier on, through info at rccga.ca. Either it be your offering, your tithe, your seed, your thanksgiving, um, please always indicate what it is for when you are given it. Indicate whether you're given it for tithe. Indicate if you're given it as offering or thanksgiving or seed or special, whatever it is. Indicate it as you are doing it in the interact. The Lord bless us all as we give in Jesus' name. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows. say thank you Jesus thank you for coming thank you for dying thank you for resurrecting we give you all the praise we've brought our offering before your throne of grace this morning we ask almighty God that you will accept us and that you will accept our offering in Jesus name we'll bless this offering in the name of God the Father in the name of God the Son and in the name of God the Holy Spirit thank you precious Lord for in Jesus' name we give. Amen. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. And my spirit praise his name. Hallelujah. For death.
this morning. Just wave your hands up to him and appreciate him for resurrection money. Oh, the Lord is so good to us. What a precious gift. What a glorious event. Just bless him and worship him and adore him for the resurrection morning. We bless you, Father. We worship you, Lord, for the resurrection morning. Without it, we can't be here. We thank you, Lord. King of glory, we thank you. Lord eternal, we bless you. Ancient of days, we worship you, Lord. Blessed be God forever. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God. Jesus is Lord. Father, we thank you for the resurrection money. We give you glory. We give you adoration. There is none like you. There is none besides you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end of all things. Heaven is your throne. The earth is your footstool. You are the final authority over authorities. We give you praise, Lord. We declare the whole of this environment for you. Lord, reign and rule in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Resurrection, hallelujah. Resurrection, hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Come on, be seated in his presence, hallelujah. I welcome you to Resurrection Morning, where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a day that defines Christianity. That we have a master, a Lord, that died for our sin, that predicted his death, and before he resurrected, he announced it. Hallelujah. And he rose up from the dead never to die again. This defines Christianity. And I'm not going to be apologetic about this, that it is the only faith that who we are following came to the world in the flesh, interacted with people, everybody saw him, he died and rose and lived forever. He's the only faith. He lives forever. Today, because of our time, you know, the choir and everybody, I want to crave your indulgence to just extend your time for us a little bit. Is that okay by the church? Hallelujah. Don't find me. If we are still here till 1 p.m., you said yes, sir. <laughs> but we we'll try, you know, because we had to give expression for our children and the choir, and those things were wonderful. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So today, we will just be looking at a topic. I would have said, the sepulchre is empty. Oh, that's all over the place. That is good. That is true. But there is an effect of the empty sepulchre. There's an effect that you cannot get anywhere else because of the resurrection of Jesus. It's a unique thing. So the title of today's message is The Body of Sin is Destroyed. The Body of Sin is Destroyed. A lot of people get into addiction, get into several things, and they seem not to be able to get themselves out from it. What they need is the touch of the power of resurrection. Once it comes upon them, that body, that addiction, that slavery, that chain, 
that fetters will be broken because of the power of resurrection. Death could not even hold our Lord captive. It's greater than that. Let's look at our text. I love this text. In Romans chapter 6, verse 5 to 6. If you're a worker in the house, shout hallelujah. If you have not gone to that WhatsApp, I'm not sure whether your hallelujah is accepted. Go to the WhatsApp platform of the workers' forum and do what Brother Kunle tells us to do. I'm also subjected to it, amen? Hallelujah. Submit to one another. Let's submit to it. Go there and do what is needful. The Lord bless you as you obey in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 6, 5 to 6. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be what? Destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Go back to verse 5, please. He says that we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. That is why the doctrine of the church regarding water baptism is essential. We don't do it just for fun. Today we will try and bring out some points about what the church does and the implication of all of this and the sequence of how Jesus was crucified and resurrected. So the church has a doctrine of water baptism. So what do you do during water baptism? You identify with the death of Jesus. You believe he's your Lord and Savior and the Master. Once you conclude and confirm this, then they dip you inside the water. That is what they are saying. We are, if you go and check that scripture again from verse 1, you see that they are talking also about water baptism. So it says, we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. If we have, and we have publicly declared and confirmed, that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and we subject ourselves to the doctrine of the church, and we get water baptized, now as a born-again believer, now as someone that has given his life to Jesus Christ, and they take you outside of that water, he said, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. That's the beauty of what happened at Golgotha, and in that cave. Because Jesus rose from there. Now, we are risen with him. Glory to Jesus. The body of sin is destroyed. It must not be said about you that you are still struggling with sin and you have experienced his power and you have tasted of his love and you have enjoyed his mercy and his faithfulness has overwhelmed your life. How come? Unless you have not gone through that. The body of sin is what? Destroyed. Can I hear you say the body of sin is destroyed? Let's look at Isaiah 54, 53. Let's go and see the principle of how that happened. Isaiah 53. We'll first read verses 4 and 5. Then we'll read 10 and 11. Let's look at the procedure. <laughs> Are we there? Isaiah 53. Verse 4 and 5 for starters. I will just stop at where I will stop today if we don't have the time, but I trust in God will advance us to a level. Surely Jesus had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted. Why? Verse 5. Quickly. He bore our griefs, carried our sorrow, but he was what? Wounded for our transgression. He had no transgression, but he was wounded for the purpose of transgression. So he said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
the confirmation, the assurance, the legality, the empowerment of our peace was hinged on him. The stripes they were talking about, if you go study about it, you will see that the Romans of those days, their whips is twisted with splinters and bones sharpened all over that whip. The stripes they're talking about, they will hit him and then they pull it. They hit him and then they pull it. That is why he was acquainted with sorrow. He says, when we look at him, there is nothing to be desired about him. Go and check those scriptures. Why? Because he was mingled and marred with the stripes and the pulling of that thing all over his body. And why was this? Because of our transgression. I'm going someplace this Sunday. I want you to follow it very carefully. Because of our transgression. So the legality of our peace was placed upon him. The authorization of our peace was placed upon him. How so? He said he was smitten, we esteem him smitten by God. Go to verse 10 and 11 quickly. We esteem him, was he smitten by God? Verse 10 and 11 quickly. Who bruised him? I can't hear you, somebody. So, the scriptures that pre preceded this was correct. We were esteemed, yes, meeting of God, yes. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why? He had put him to grief. Why? When thou shalt make his soul, and what? An offering for sin. Somebody say, offering for sin. He was made an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Verse 11, quickly, so that we can wrap that place up quickly. He shall see of the travel of his soul, and shall be what? God will be satisfied with the stripes. God will be satisfied with the tons of crown first in his head. God will be satisfied with the spear that was hooked into his side. God will be satisfied at the end of the day by the vinegar that was given to him to drink. He says, God will be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Because of this process, nobody else can excuse you from your sin. Nobody else has the legality and the platform to do any help for you concerning your unrighteousness and the wickedness that has happened in the past. What God did was to package every one of it like that in all of our lives and put it on who? The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. So it now pleased God that all of the suffering that he was given, those are the things that we should have received individually. Pastor, today is resurrection money. Yes, we are going there. Amen. Hallelujah. But we need to understand what led to what. He says, he was made and it pleased the Lord. That verse 10 is serious. It pleased the Lord to have all of this thing done to him. Why? Because that is the only escape for humanity. Somebody say, I have escaped. You are not saying as if you have escaped. Come on, shout, shout it, let me hear you. That is if truly you are born again. Unless you are truly born again. Ephesians chapter 2, we may not have time to read everything. The reconciling of the fellowship with God. Ephesians 2, 13. Somebody there. 
But now in Christ Jesus, we who sometimes were far off at midnight by what? Every nail, pakam, they hit on his hand, on his leg, and blood was gushing out. The thorns around him forced into his head. By that blood, we have been made close to God. Verse 14 quickly. And we can jump from there. Quickly, please. Verse 14. IT. For he is. Is it confirming Isaiah 53? The chastisement of our peace was a. So he is our peace. Who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall. Of partition between us. Go and read the rest at home. We don't have time. To, up to verse 19, but let's stop there. So, his blood gave us the opportunity to be reconciled. That's what you need to go to the, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wash in the blood. What's that hymn? Wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood. Of Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. That is available that can transform a sinner, a wicked man, an adulterer, a fornicator, a cheat, a murderer, whatsoever evil or wickedness that has been done in the past. The blood is able to wash us clean, make us whole, make us pure, make us holy, and transform us to become a saint. That is the reason for the resurrection. Hallelujah. Let's quickly go. Maybe 10, 15 minutes more. I'll try. God help me. First Corinthians chapter 2. I may jump some things today. First Corinthians chapter 2, 7 to 8. Quickly, please. The wisdom of resurrection. Look at the wisdom of resurrection. First Corinthians chapter 2, 7 to 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Faith in Christ is a mystery. That somebody died over 2,000 years ago, and I confess that I is my Lord today in 2024, and therefore I have received cleansing, is a mystery. Okay, how do you explain God in his capacity having a son? And you now say his son is also God. It's a mystery. How can it be there God and then he's also Jesus on earth? It's a mystery. Listen to this. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Verse 8. Let's read that together. One to go which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified. Everything that they do to a child of God is to give you glory. No matter how it is. Even if it is painful. Hello? We don't have time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the secondary school, they said, atom, or what did they say, is a non-destructible element. Uh, uh, only, only people that study literature were, are here. They, uh, they used to run away from mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology in those days. <laughs> so everybody's looking at me. Amen? 
However, what I'm trying to bring from there is that as a child of God, we are indestructible. Kelibro soto yandis. No matter what you do to us, it shall work for our good. It says all things work together for good for them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. It says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, what will I do? I condemn. He said this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Hallelujah. They did not know about it. If they knew that moving against Jesus and putting him on the cross will give you and I glory today, they won't do it. That boss that is giving you trouble in the office last year or whichever year and made you to begin to think of your own business, are you going to be angry against him? I don't get angry with people, though. I don't get angry. Whatever you do to me is helping. You are helping me to face a reality or do something. So when it's coming, I say, God, what are you telling me? Where's my next step of glory? That's the only thing that can happen to a child of God. He says, if they knew it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They thought that would be the end of it. Listen, Bishop Idausa, blessed memory. I used to say it right from university days. Jesus Christ was destined to overcome death, not by not dying, but by living after death. That's what Bishop Udausa said. He was destined to overcome death. Then how is it that you are destined to overcome death and it is through dying you will overcome it? You see, it's a mystery. It's foolishness to the people of the world. <laughs> that your success will be achieved through your failure. You got it, my brother, sir. Receive it. What an oxymoron. That's what the English grammarian will say. Oxymoron. Caliber city. We don't have too much time. Amen. Somebody there. Your, your success is going to be achieved through your failures. What are you talking about? The way of God is a mystery. <laughs> it's mysterious. Hallelujah. Are you still there, somebody? That's the wisdom of resurrection. The wisdom of resurrection. Somebody say wisdom of resurrection. Permit me to just use maybe five minutes to clear this issue that also used to bug me. But we'll not go into it fully because we'll have to round up very soon. Hallelujah. The event sequence. Somebody say event sequence. So they say, ah, Jesus was on the cross. On the third day he rose. Say, how do you calculate it? That will have been Monday or something. Or, no, listen. Let's look at scriptures. Glory to Jesus. Friday was the crucifixion day. Mark 15. Let's quickly go there. Mark 15. If I do this one, then I can go ahead and round up probably. Mark 15, 42 to 45. Quickly. And now when the evening was come, because it was the preparation. Preparation for what? Sabbath was an, a big matter with the Jews. A big matter. You must not cook. You must not carry stick. You must not. It's a day of rest. He says, now when the evening was come, because it was preparation, that is the day before Sabbath. That's the Friday, verse 43. If you are looking at it in our own contemporary world. Then Joseph of Arimathea, a man of influence, respected in the community, went to the pilot to ask for the body of Jesus. They gave it to him, verse 44. I'm summarizing verse 44. And the pilot marveled and said, ah, is the man dead already? He called some of the soldiers. Hey, 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 come on. Give me security reports. Like they do in America or in Nigeria. They gave him the security report and said the man is dead already. Verse 45. Quickly. And when he knew it, it, it of the centurion, he gave body, the body to Jesus. Hallelujah. So that was the day before what? Sabbath. That's the day before Sabbath. Hallelujah. 
Saturday. So what happened, Pastor? Let's go to Luke quickly. 23, we'll read verses 54 to 56. Luke 23, 54 and 56. And that day, are you there? Quickly. And that day was the preparation. And the Sabbath did what? That is, Saturday was coming close. Verse 56. Quickly. Are we there? And they returned and do, did what? The women, they went to... The, why did they prepare spices and ointments and all that? Because on the Sabbath, they would not have been able to do so. Because it is lo law in Israel, you must not even leave the thing. You must not do any work. So when they go back, they prepare the spices and the ointments and everything, you know, on the sab uh, a day before the Sabbath, so that when they go and visit, then they can do so. Let's quickly look at the last part there. Maybe look 24, 1 to 6. Let's look at 1 to 6 of that. And you can also check Max, uh, I think, 16 verses 1 to 4. Max 16, 1 to 4. But let's look at uh, Luke 24, 1 to 6. Now, upon the first day of the week, which is Sunday, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared on Friday, and certain others with them. Verse 2. Let's run that quickly, to IT, please, up to verse 6. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. Verse 3. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Verse 5. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Verse 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, can we say that together? He is not here, but he is risen. Can you say it again? He is not here, but he is... Can you say it one more time? He is not here, but he is risen. Hallelujah. Death could not hold him captive. It can't. It couldn't have. The Lord eternal, the rock of ages, the ancient of days, the giver of life, the controller of life, the creator of life. It is impossible for death to hold him captive. Hallelujah. He can't be held captive. Let me go and close because of our time. Hallelujah. Luke 23, 14 to 15. Luke 23, 14 and 15. Luke 23, 14 and 15. Look at Jesus. They brought him before the Pilate. And look at the utterance from the mouth of those that had authority. He said, they said unto them, you have brought this man unto me for condemnation. As one that perverted the people, and behold, I have searched him. I have questioned him. I have done my research on him. Sister Shitu is a lawyer. I have done all the legal things I needed to do about him. Behold, I have examined him before you. I have found no fault in this man. Touching those things whereof he accused him. Verse 15. No. Nor yet, Herod. I'm not the only one that tried him. For I sent you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I want you to examine your life. You know, the Lord will help us. To have a heart of gratitude. If a man has done that for you, that is where we are going to round up today. In this if a man has so much done that for you, Rakelechi, should we not be grateful to him? 
Oh, we see you. Huh? Okay. Ah. Shouldn't we be grateful to him? Kai. If we are not grateful to him, do you imagine how we can end our lives? We need to be grateful to him. Luke 24. Please help me to go to 46 and 47 as we round up. Just because of our time. Hallelujah. Luke 24, 46 to 40 and 47. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse 47. And that repentance and remissions of sins should be what? Be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Have you gone out for him? That is one thing to show that we are grateful. Evangelism. That's where we want to round up this Sunday. To show that God, I am grateful. You suffered because of me and you have given us that great commission that we should go everywhere and tell others. Until their ears will say, ah, well, hey, my friend, Jesus saved my life. He said, what do you mean? My life usually is full of pain, trouble, anxiety. But since I accepted Jesus Christ, there is this peace in my heart. I'm extending the same to you. You go to the next person. Oh, let me testify about what Jesus has done for me. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. He has given me eternal life. I'm extending the same to you. That's all. Will that cost you money? Huh? Will you spend dollar? That is the sign of our gratitude. Bow down your heads as we close our eyes. How have you been showing him gratitude? You have collected the gift of salvation. But are you extending it to others? Oh, Jesus went to the... He bore our griefs and our sorrow. He was a man acquainted with pains and grief. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was bruised for our iniquity. It pleased the Lord to have him bruised for our iniquity. So that today we can be free from sin. It's a celebration of freedom from sin, from death, from diseases, from shame and reproach. And he has said, go and tell others about this. Let us all repent, including myself. Let us repent of our sins and promise him today being the day of resurrection. Evangelism shall be resurrected in our hearts. We shall go out there and tell others about Jesus. Every opportunity we have, uh, celebrate the freedom from sin and death and disease. If you are here today, because of what you have heard, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, just wave your hands wherever you are. You want to, you say, Lord, you have done this for me. I want to rededicate my life to you. Wherever you are in the audience, let me see your hands. Just wave your hands unto the Lord. And the Lord God Almighty will visit you. We give you fresh anointing grace to run with the vision of heaven for your life. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God forever. Thank you, Father, for that sister. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask for God for grace. I ask for grace for her, anointing, fresh oil. Thank you so much for her. Lord, increase her strength in the name of Jesus. Increase her strength. Lord, let her become strong for you. And Lord, bless and reward her mightily in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please rise up on your feet. I want you to join me and pray this prayer as I go and sit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus shall reign forevermore. He shall reign forevermore. Oh, Jesus. Jesus shall reign. Yeah.
celebrating and it's synonymous to the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. I want you to pray that every good thing that I've died in my life, by the power of resurrection we are celebrating today, I command you, come alive. Can you do that for me, please? I want you to pray for your own life, your own life, your own life, your own life. Say in the name of Jesus! Oh, you are calling his name as if you are a doubter. I want to say in the name of Jesus, Father, every good thing that has died in my life, by the power of resurrection that we are celebrating today, I command, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive. in the name of Jesus, every good thing that has died in my life by the power of resurrection that we are celebrating today. I command you, come alive in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come alive in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every place uh, that the devil has just changed me, every place uh, that the devil has just changed me, oh, I command uh, by the power of resurrection, that we celebrate today. Oh, come alive in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I feel like going to sit down now, but the prayer point came to my mind. <laughs> Every of my vision that is dead, I command by the power of resurrection. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come, go pray the prayer. In the name of Jesus. Every vision. Every vision. Oh, my vision that is dead. By the power of resurrection, I command you. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Vision, come alive in the name of Jesus. Gifts of God in my life, come alive in the name of Jesus. The gifts of God. The blessings of God, oh, that has been written concerning me, be activated by the power of resurrection. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Say, Apostle. Hallelujah. Let's begin to stretch our hand to the pastor and begin to declare. As he has ministered today, that shall be his portion in the name of Jesus. Everything dead in his life. Today is resurrected in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray that he will not lack revelation in the name of Jesus. As he has ministers consigning fresh anointing. Consigning him, he shall receive fresh anointing all the time in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for strength. Thank you for virtue that I've gone for. Lord, we pray for him that you will bless him. Lord, you will bless him in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with him. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. For death could not hold him. Even in the grave, Jesus.
the stone was rolled away. There was an earthquake. And the stone was rolled away. Matthew, Matthew 28 verse 5. Matthew 28. Let's, let's read it. Hallelujah. No, Matthew 28 verse 2. Let's look at it. Please put it for us. Matthew 28 verse 2. As we pray. As we pray and as we go. Matthew 28 verse 2. For death could not hold captive, even in the grave, Jesus is born. In the grave, Jesus is born. He said, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. This week you are victorious in the name of Jesus. Every stone is rolled away. You are coming out victorious in the name of Jesus. The angel sat on it. You will sit, you will sit on those challenges in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every challenge is rolled away. Every challenge is rolled away. In the name of Jesus, as we go for this week, we will be victorious. In the name of Jesus, because Jesus resurrected. Because Jesus resurrected. The grave could not hold him. He resurrected. The grave could not hold him. Father, we thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord. As we go this week, we go victorious. We know we will prevail. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Let's share the grace. Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you for coming. Have a wonderful week. Please remember that from tomorrow, the church is fasting, right? First three days. God bless you.